Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube series on designing and implementing a secure web portal. My name is Jay Osper and I'm the VP of Cloud Computing here at Pistol Star. And I'd like to continue our journey through the design and implementation considerations regarding deploying a secure web portal. In this video, I'd like to really focus on a key area of the user experience and how they interact with your portal offering. To get a better understanding about how your users engage with your portal, we need to take a look at the type of portal that you're looking to provide. As we talked about in our earlier videos, your portal really is a door to your online kingdom, with the user presenting their ID and password as the key. Understanding how you want your end user to gain access to your kingdom plays a huge role in how you devise and implement your security policy. Some portals present login and password credentials first and foremost. The graphic that I'm showing you here on the screen helps illustrate this potential approach. To follow through with my door analogy, this is like a raised drawbridge on a castle. And to paraphrase a popular movie series, without proper credentials, your users shall not pass. Many portals follow this approach as oftentimes they want full control over how, where, and what a user gains access to. Oftentimes this behavior can be driven by regulatory requirements and an overriding focus on data security. While secure, this design begs some questions with regards to how the user is presented with the login screen. Are they seeing something that is branded with your organization's logo, color, and typography? Or are they presented with something more generic? Being able to leverage flexible design aesthetics that are able to incorporate some of your organization's digital presence can go a long way in engendering trust among your user base. Simple design cues like this reinforce to the user that they are in fact on a legitimate, safe, and sanctioned site, whereas a more vanilla, cookie-cutter approach may raise doubts as to the legitimacy of the site. Another approach to portal design is a little less rigid in its authentication-first approach and may allow users to interact with different areas of the website to determine which area suits their needs best. Here up on the screen is, again, another example of this approach. In these instances, you may want to embed a login and password screen directly into your home page in a prominent but nondescript way, say up in the corner of the screen somewhere. As you can see, this page still carries the look and feel of the organization's corporate identity, but in a significantly more open and integrated manner. You know, there is really no right or wrong approach here. Each method serves a purpose and can often be driven by regulatory considerations more than anything else. The key here is having the ability to fit the authentication requirements in, inside your digital landscape. The more you can give your portal that look and feel of the rest of your online presence, the higher your end user engagement and confidence will be. So now that we've opened the door and are successfully inside, there are some other things you need to consider when it comes to user behavior and interaction. Does that one central login open the door to a house with many rooms and present the user with a number of options with regard to data, information, and applications they have access to? Or does that key only open one door and require the user to use the key on multiple occasions depending on what they want to do? Most users would rather authenticate once and not have to continually enter credentials based on what they're seeking to do. Here's another thing to consider with regards to that quote unquote one key to many rooms approach. Can you give them access to all the rooms, let's say in this case applications, that they want? Or are you limited by only giving them access to SAML enabled applications? Does your portal solution allow access to both SAML and non-SAML enabled web apps? While it's important to keep your eye on the user, it's also just as important to keep your eye on any regulatory compliance issues you, you may be subject to. Having the ability to enforce things like password length, sensitivity, and expiration may be something your users could care very little about, but your auditors may feel entirely different about the subject. And speaking of audits, there are a number of compliance requirements that make having the ability to report out on user activity, things like the number of successful logins and failed logins, points of access, and any potential password hacking are a must-have rather than a nice-to-have. As we outlined in our video on regulatory requirements, be sure to have all of these nailed down sooner rather than later. Well, that about wraps up our topic on portal integration and the myriad of con considerations that go into satisfying both your end user needs as well as your own internal security considerations. Check back here on YouTube as we continue our journey through some of the best practices when it comes to designing and implementing a secure web portal 
Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you soon.